So picture this, you're in your very first day as an analyst at a real estate investment shop. Your boss hands you a picture of an abandoned school and asks you to figure out what the value of the property is and how much the company should pay for it. So how do you do that? Especially when you don't know the values of this specific product type. That's exactly what we're gonna cover in today's video. For first dibs on all new real estate financial modeling and career training videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video. So real estate has a lot of different product types and not all of these product types fall into retail, office, industrial, or multifamily properties. So if you come across a special purpose property, especially something that you wanna repurpose into something else, how do you actually value that deal? Well, by the end of this video, you'll know the three-step process that you need to follow in order to figure out what the value is for any special purpose real estate property, regardless of whether it's a school, a church, an abandoned mall, or any other property type that you might come across. Now, step number one here is to find out what is called the highest and best use of that property. This essentially means that you'll figure out what the current zoning is or what you can actually build on the land and what type of property is most profitable to build and operate on that land. So for the abandoned school example, you may look up the zoning and find out that that property is zoned for both retail and office use, so you can narrow it down to those two product types. From there, you can do some quick math to compare retail rents versus office rents, and also the approximate construction cost for each in order to make a decision about which type of property you'd want to move forward with. Now, number two is once you've decided what you're actually going to build on the property is to project out your cash flows for that deal. Now, if you're planning a development, usually this involves some sort of a period of negative cash flows during entitlement and construction, followed by a lease up period to actually fill up your building, and then finally followed by positive cash flow for however long you decide to hold the property. Now, in this process, you'll need to make assumptions about how long your construction will take, how much it will cost, and the kind of rents you can lease up each space for and what your expenses are likely to be for the deal as well. Now, if you plan on selling the deal at any point, you'll also have to come up with some sort of exit assumption about what you plan on selling the property for at the end of your hold period. Now, if you put all of these things together to build a model that includes all of your assumptions, you're going to build out projected cash flows for the deal that can be used to calculate your investment returns. From there, all you need to do is just adjust the purchase price of that school until you hit the point where you hit a return target that actually makes the deal worth doing. Which leads me to step number three. Now, step number three is to actually decide what target returns you're trying to hit on the deal. So for example, maybe you wanna hit a 17% internal rate of return over a five-year hold period on the deal. If the listing price is $2 million and you plug $2 million into your model, you may see that that $2 million valuation gives you a 14 or 15% internal rate of return for that five-year hold period. From there, all you need to do is just adjust your purchase price downward until you hit that 17% internal rate of return. And when you hit that, that is going to be your valuation for the deal and how much you can pay for the property and still hit your returns, assuming your assumptions are correct. At that point, you have your valuation and you're ready to go ahead with making an offer on the deal. So now you can go back to your boss, explain your assumptions and talk about what that purchase price should be and why you should buy the deal at that price. So that's it. That's the three step process to actually valuing any sort of special purpose property that you have, whether it's generating revenue now or not. Now, where most people get hung up on this is the actual financial modeling piece and building out a financial model that actually represents what they're trying to build. So if you want more help with that, I have a free real estate financial modeling crash course that'll teach you the basics and the foundation of real estate financial modeling in general. Or if you wanna go straight ahead into learning how to build a development model from scratch, I'm gonna link directly to my courses. And if you wanna learn how to build a real estate development model from scratch, I'd highly recommend checking out my class, the Real Estate Development Modeling Masterclass. So if you like this video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with anyone who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.